Hi everyone, my name is Carly Burridge. I'm the owner and founder of Gaining Health, and we are back for another episode of What's Up Wednesday. So every Wednesday, I review either a journal article, or last week we did a book review on an obesity-related topic and talk about the clinical relevance. So this week, we're talking about a journal article from the recent obesity journal from the April edition. And the title of the article is Symptomatic Hypoglycemia After Gastric Bypass, Incidents and Predictive Factors in a Cohort of 1,138 Consecutive Patients. So the objective of this study was to determine the incidence of postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia. So mouthful. So we'll call it PPHH from here on out, but that's what it stands for, postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia, okay? So the objective was to determine the incidence of PPHH and to identify risk factors for this in patients um, post ruin y gastric bypass. Uh, we're starting to see that there's just a much higher incidence of this than uh, was initially um, estimated. And patients with diabetes and those who are less than two years post-op were excluded from this study. And what they found was that 32.6% of um, the patients in this cohort had moderate PPHH, and 11.6% of these patients post ruin y gastric bypass had severe PPHH, which is defined as having those neuroglycemic symptoms, which are more dangerous and can result in trauma and falls and potentially even death. So what they found was that a total of 44.2% of these patients, at least two years post ruin y gastric bypass, had either moderate or severe postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia. So let's talk a little bit about PPHH and why it occurs. So PPHH is a reactive hypoglycemia that occurs after carbohydrate intake, and it's caused by a, a change in the intestinal anatomy that leads to an exaggerated insulin surge after carbohydrate ingestion. So they get too much insulin, so about an hour to three hours after a meal containing carbohydrates, that's when they develop um, this um, hypoglycemia, these symptoms. Um, and it will also cause hunger, of course. Hypoglycemia leads to hunger. So that's one of the problems that they're seeing. And uh, one thing that other studies have looked at is that patients who experience this is actually a risk factor for weight regain because it can lead to frequent snacking and hunger and urges and sometimes even that grazing behavior that we often see after ruin y gastric bypass and oftentimes the patient's just blamed for maladaptive eating, but this gives us a little bit more insight that this could actually be due to the fact that they're experiencing these postprandial hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia type symptoms. And it's also important to recognize that it's different from dumping syndrome or early PPHH, which typically occurs about 30 minutes after a meal. And that's the result of the rapid emptying of food, particularly carbohydrates, sugars, and, and starchy foods into the small intestines. And so that triggers a rapid fluid shift into the intestines to dilute those contents. And so that can result in those GI and vasomotor symptoms that we see with dumping syndrome, like the, the diarrhea, the nausea, the lightheadedness, the shaking. Um, so this is different. This typically occurs one to three hours after a meal, especially a carbohydrate containing meal. And it typically presents at least one year or longer after ruin y gastric bypass. So again, why is this important? Because it's associated with weight regain, because it's associated um, with symptoms and a lower quality of life, and because we're seeing that it's such a high incidence of this, this is something that we really um, need to be evaluating our patients for. They also found, because uh, they also looked at risk factors, and they also found that patients who were younger patients who reached a lower BMI and patients who had the greatest weight reduction after ruin y gastric bypass uh, were at higher risk for this. And that makes sense because if you think about it, those patients are probably the ones who have become most insulin sensitive. So they're going to have this response, uh, a, a greater response when they have these high insulin levels because they're more insulin sensitive. At least that's my takeaway from it. That wasn't in the article, but that makes sense to me. Um, Another thing that I think is really important to recognize is that um, patients 
Two years after wound-wide gastric bypass, only 2% of those patients are still following up with their surgical team. So this is something really important for people in primary care, uh, in obesity management, or any other you know, field of medicine to be aware of so that we're screening patients for this, um, if they've had a history of wound-wide gastric bypass, and also if they're experiencing weight regain, this could be one of the factors that's contributing to this. So how do we treat this? The treatment is basically trying to avoid those carbohydrates because those are what's triggering that insulin relief, or insulin release. So it might be that some patients, especially if they've had a ruin wide gastric bypass, especially if they're um, younger and they've had significant weight loss, just are going to do better on a lower carbohydrate diet. And personally, I think most patients um, who have had bariatric surgery um, are going to do better on a lower carbohydrate diet, but especially in these patients, it can be really important, and especially if they're having symptoms. So that is my takeaway for today in my clinical pearl. So make sure we're assessing for this, and um, we are asking about carbohydrate content and when they are having these symptoms, um, and especially if they're having weight rate gain. Uh, so last but not least, um, if you are a healthcare provider who either wants to learn more about obesity management or maybe you've already had the education and you want to start an obesity program, that's why I gained, that's why I started my company Gaining Health to help you, to provide you those resources. I'm coming out with more new resources um, later this spring. I do have my book out already, so Developing an Obesity Management Program the Healthcare Providers Roadmap. It's available at gaininghealth.com. I also have lots of other resources available on the website. So please subscribe to the website to stay up to date on all of the new content that we have coming out, including patient education material. And I hope to see you all next week for another episode of What's Up Wednesday. Take care.